one of the questions that I get asked a lot is what kind of gear I use. So I wanted to quickly walk through uh, some of the lenses that I use and my main shooting camera. So let's jump right into it. Uh, my camera is a Nikon D600. It's a full frame camera. Um, it's about 24 megapixel. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend this camera. It's a terrible camera. Um, the D600 from Nikon when it first released had a lot of issues with oil on the sensor and this camera definitely is one of those cameras I constantly have to clean the sensor or I get spots. Um, it takes beautiful images but that is a definite downside to this camera. The other thing that this camera lacks that other full frame cameras um, have is this was kind of Nikon's first uh, budget friendly full frame camera. So what they did is they took a lot of parts out of a crop sensor camera and put it into a full frame camera. So my autofocus zone is very, very small. It's really in the center of the camera and not much on the outside. So it makes it difficult to compose shots or you have to focus and then recompose. So that's when you get lock on um, your subject, get ready to take the shot and then you move it to the actual framing that you want. So it's not ideal. Sometimes you get, sometimes you can miss focus. And also if you're focusing in the center of the lens and then you move that to the edge, it's going to be a little less sharp. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the camera though takes beautiful still images. Another very frustrating thing about this camera is the video feature. So we use video a lot nowadays. Um, and this camera, in order to change the f-stop, you have to back out of the camera menu. So you can't actually see what it's doing. You have to back out, change the f-stop, go back in, see if the exposure is right. And it's, it's just a big mess. So I don't really recommend this camera. I think if you're looking for a full frame Nikon camera. I think you probably are better off stepping up and spending a little bit more money and getting the 750. There wasn't an option when I bought this. It was really this camera or I think it was like the D3 at the time, which was I think four to $5,000. So this was $1,500, that was four to 5,000. So um, this was a good, a good option for me to get into the full frame uh, full frame world. So on this is my Nikon 70 to 200, 2.8. So it's a very big lens. This is, uh, this is actually my favorite lens. I think the images that come out of this are just beautiful, especially if you think about uh, portrait photography and things like that. You do get a bit further back from your subject, but the images that it produces are just great. The the shallow depth of field that you can get at 2.8 at 200 millimeter is it it's almost unrivaled. So I I really really love this lens and it's very sharp. Um, it has vibration reduction, so it it's easy to handheld. Um, I say it's easy to handheld, but it's it's pretty it's a pretty beefy setup when you get those two put together. Uh, for the next lens choice, this is the second lens that gets used most often. It's a Nikon 24 to 70 2.8. Again, it's a zoom lens, uh, fixed aperture at 2.8. Um, another very sharp lens. Um, a downside to this lens is it doesn't have vibration reduction. So you have to keep that in mind when you're at lower shutter speed. So if you're doing event photography and it's a low light situation, um, you have to be mindful of keeping it steady because it doesn't have that built-in piece. And then the other thing that's not necessarily great for this is for video, it doesn't have that built-in vibration reduction. So you have to keep that in mind when you're hand holding footage. The next lens that I use, um, and I would say these two here get used probably 95% of the time. Uh, this is this is a great lens, but I never really fell in love with it like some people do. So this is the Nikon 85 1.4 G lens. So a huge piece of glass up front there. Um, it's a great lens. It takes great, great photos. 
Um, I find the focus a little hit or miss for me. And part of that is because you're at 1.1.4. Some of it has to do with micro adjustment in the camera. So I've had to adjust it a couple different times in this camera. Um, but I just always end up going to the 70 to 200. I'm just more comfortable with that focal range. So this doesn't get used a lot. It's great for low light conditions. So the, the 1.4, f-stop definitely lets in a ton of light so um, that's a lens that I use uh, rarely but when I do I, I love the effects I mean the the bokeh that you get with this in this, like portrait photography is is really nice and you can get a little bit closer and get that same bokeh that you'd have to stand a little further back so if you have some subjects that need some more coaching or um, feel more comfortable with you closer to them to kind of change the pose a little bit. This is a better choice. The last lens that I use is a Tokina 17 to 35. It's um, honestly the only time I use this is during automotive photography. Maybe some real estate photography if I need to get some super wide angle shots. Um, really, I bought this lens specifically to use um, in my rig, automotive rig shots. So I needed a at least a 17 millimeter wide lens to be able to capture um, the full frame of the car and some background in order to not get super distortion on those rig shots. It's an F4, so it's decently quick. Honestly, when I'm shooting the rig shots, uh, I'm up around like F18, somewhere in there. So I don't necessarily need a super fast lens for that. So those are the four main lenses that I use. And again, I pair that with my Nikon D600. So I get a lot of questions about my gear. I hope that this helps answer some of those questions that people have. And um, I think in the near future, I think I'm going to switch to the Sony system. So this Nikon system has treated me well from a photo standpoint. It's infuriating from a vi video standpoint. And that's the main reason to that I'm thinking about switching to Sony. So I think they've just leaped over Canon and Nikon from that standpoint with their in-body stabilization, a lot of the a lot of the video tools that they have, and they're still delivering superb superb still images. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully that answered some questions. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks.